Dr. Shane, tell us what you saw. Yeah. So, thanks for asking. Uh, so, my name is Shane McKenna, and I've been asked to speak to you briefly about the colonoscopy of this patient. Uh, so, it's a six-year-old male uh, who is three weeks post uh, low anterior resection with sleep ileostomy formation. Um, this was done for rectal cancer. Uh, the patient was then subsequently diagnosed with bilateral PEs and a um, pelvic fluid collection, and this colonoscopy was done as a result. Um, so, just before we begin, let's orientate ourselves. So, uh, closest to the camera, we can see the rectum. And as we just move forward, you can see more of the colon. And then, just as we approach here now, uh, what do we see in front of us? So, on the right hand side, uh, you can see the um, correct lumen, which is continuous with the rest of the bile. And then to the left, uh, we can see um, where the anastomotic uh, dehiscence has occurred. Uh, and beyond that, then it leads into the leak cavity itself. You can also note here, here, and here is the staples from where the anastomosis um, has dehisced. Um, we'll just move on then. So this is a leak? It's a leak, sorry. It's an anastomotic leak, yeah. So we're just going to take now a look into the correct lumen uh, just to check the tissue status of um, the proximal colon. And as you can see, uh, the tissue is well perfused um, and looking quite healthy. So now we're just going to withdraw. The rectum segment is taken out. This is really a descending colon which has been brought down to form the anastomosis. So we're just going to look into the, um, the leak cavity itself. And although there's a little bit of blood, as you can see here, um, this white tissue with its granulation tissue, which signifies uh, healing. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, so in this case, uh, endo sponges were the treatment that were used to treat this um, this leak. Uh, they are generally used for an uh, anastomotic leaks in the low rectal region. Um, it involves endoscopically placing a highly porous sponge into the leak cavity. Um, they're sized and made to fit the actual cavity specifically and uh, they are attached to a drain tube which is then connected to a negative vacuum, a negative pressure vacuum. Uh, this leads to continuous suction uh, which continuously drains uh, any fluid um, and this as a result reduces uh, the risk of infection um, and also promotes granulation tissue formation. Um, there are an important procedures to know in that um, as we know anastomotic leaks um, occur in 10 to 15 percent of anastomosis formations. Um, yeah, fantastic. So we're going to get back to this patient, the outcomes and topics of...